Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm doing another episode in my Building the Shot series going over this photo on the screen of Madison that I took two years ago. If you're not familiar with this Building the Shot series, it's basically one where I do my best to break down everything I can about how a single photo of mine was taken and pretty much show you guys the straight out of camera shots that led up to that final image, explain the camera settings and the light setup and pretty much explain a little bit about the thought process that was involved throughout the photo shoot. I do usually go over the edit as well in Photoshop, but I actually have a whole other video dedicated to how I edited this shot in Photoshop. So I'll just go ahead and just link to that in the top right corner screen, as well as the description area below. Before I continue though, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is a creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done. I personally shop at Adorama for the great deals on products I both use and recommend, plus the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any of the products I talk about in today's video, feel free to check out the description area below for links to those products and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. What you're seeing on the screen right now, of course, is a shot without any light firing. Sometimes when I'm doing a photo shoot, I'll have it in my mind to take a photo without any light firing so you can see exactly what the light that I'm adding to the photo is doing. Whenever I'm doing any sort of photo shoot, I always want to expose for the ambient and then add my flash. So exposing for the ambient just means adjusting my settings to like how the background looks like. And that's pretty much what's going on here. One thing that's very crucial to that process for myself is making sure that the subject is completely in the shade. I don't want any sort of harsh sunlight on top of the face that will kind of interfere with how I want my subject to be lit. So my goal is always to have that subject completely in shade. That's pretty much exactly why she's positioned the way that she is in this photo. I didn't want any sort of sunlight to be in her face and instead I wanted to use that sunlight as a free rim light which is exactly what's happening in this photo. You can see a little bit of the sunlight on her hair on the side of her arm and the bag and her leg and pretty much all the way on the side of her body. Her being completely in shade kind of actually heavily influenced how I was going to pose her and what was going to be in the background. Because for example, if I had her turned more towards the sunlight, then I could have aimed for the background to be some other palm trees that were nearby. But because I wanted her completely in shade, that meant that I had to work with this type of background, which I actually did like. I found that the solid building behind her matched kind of the vibe and the tone of her outfit, you know, very neutral tones. So it worked very well. And I actually did really like how how the sky was looking in this exact spot because what was happening was a nice gradient from left to right kind of goldish tones on the left side and then bluer tones on the right side even though the parking meter is not ideal it was something for her to kind of position herself on and pose on so that's why we ended up using it as a prop to lean on because she could have just posed on the sidewalk herself but i just felt like having her connect to something in that environment would be a stronger image and that's why we ended up using that parking meter I wanted to just quickly talk about the settings real quickly. I was using ISO 100, which is the lowest ISO on my Sony a6000. I was also at f1.4 on my Sigma 16 f1.4 lens, which is a crop sensor lens. And I was also at 1 160th shutter speed. The modifier that I used was a simple shoot through umbrella. I'll go ahead and actually show you guys the light setup so you can see exactly how it was. I had the light pretty high and then I had the zoom speed light at I believe half power. I did start off at half power thinking that was going to be not enough and then I was going to increase it after that. But I got really lucky with that output and I ended up using that output for this shot here. One other crucial element to this photo was the six stop ND filter that I used for the camera of the Sony a6000. If I did not use that six stop ND filter, then I would have had to have been at a very fast shutter speed, like one four thousandth of a second. If you guys don't know this yet, whenever you use high speed sync, which is whenever you use a faster shutter speed than your camera's sync speed, and that's going to vary on the camera. For my case, the Sony a6000 one one sixtieth of a second. Whenever you pass that camera's sync speed, you enter into high speed sync and high speed sync drastically cuts the power from your light. So what I usually do now is instead of using a faster shutter speed to lower the ambient, I'm physically adding darkness with that ND filter to do the exact same job, which is lowering the ambient. But I feel like we've been talking too much about the technical stuff. So let me just move on from that and start actually talking about this image right here. This shot was taken at half output on the flash and it ended up being exactly where I wanted the light to be. So then I can just focus on other things like the pose. With this shot, what I felt with the pose was I felt like her chin was a little too high so I asked her to kind of just lower the chin which ended up with this picture here but when I took this image I felt like the hair was too much in her face and I felt like her leg was just aiming too much to the camera so I wanted her to just 
aim it toward the right to her right, our camera left. So after I took this shot, she moves her hair back and she moves her leg to the side and I took this shot. But this photo is very, very close to that final shot that we took that I wanted to make this video talking about, which is this one here. But you guys probably can't see it from the naked eye. But if you zoom in, you can see that I actually did miss the focus just a little bit. And I, you know, this might be a rookie mistake, but I'm going to blame the gear. The Sony a6000 was struggling a little bit with the focus. So I got just slightly out of focus and that ended up with a slightly blurry image. But I ended up, you know, taking a good photo with the focus being completely or with the face being in focus. And that was this shot here, which was the final image. Like I said before, I did dedicate a whole other video showing how I edited this shot in Lightroom and Photoshop. So I will just show you guys the edit real quickly. But you know, this is pretty much how I edited the shot in Lightroom. But now I want to go ahead and just move on from this image and show you guys some of the other images that I took as well, because they are pretty nice and interesting too. And again, here is the light setup for that image. I actually did also edit this behind the scenes photo to look like this because I did want to match how the final shot looked like right here or the final, at least the Lightroom edited version to match the behind the scenes. So that's why I edited the behind the scenes as well. But after I took that last image, the one that I really liked, I also took this one here. I actually feel like her expression is pretty strong in this image. And I also did, you know, change to landscape orientation to take this shot. Even though I do like this photo and her expression and everything, you can definitely see that there's two eyesores of vehicles in the parking lot there. I did have it in mind that if I really did like this shot, then I would just edit them out of the photo because it is pretty possible with the parking lot and what I'm able to work with to kind of edit those two cars out. One thing that I did mess up with this kind of orientation, this composition, is that I did have the sunlight in the frame of the shot. And that's something that I was trying to avoid and something that I did avoid with the other shot that I did like in this photo here. Actually, it is kind of in the shot a little bit, just a little bit, but with the other shot that I took right now with this landscape orientation shot, it's fully in the shot and it's going to be very hard to edit that you know, that sunlight out realistically. So in other words, if I really did like this landscape shot here, then I would have to kind of be limited in how I want to underexpose and get more detail in that sky. Because again, then it will just be too much of a blotch of overexposure in that sky. After I took this shot, I took another photo of her and I think I had it in mind that I might want to go back to portrait orientation, which is exactly what I did with this shot here. And after I took this photo, I was done with this location and then I moved to another location. Even though I don't have a shot without the light firing, it was pretty dark to where she was at right now in this spot on this bench. But this was just a random little, um, I want to say this little auto shop, but they were closed and it looks pretty cool and it matched the kind of fashion vibe that we're going. I don't think I mentioned it yet, but the photographer who invited me to this photo shoot was doing a bit of a fashion shoot for that bag so I kind of just had it in my mind to kind of just display the bag as much as I can kind of front and center or at least side by side to the subject so here's this first shot in this new location here's another shot where she's posed a little bit down and then a little bit of a variation of that I actually did like this photo here and then I took one more shot and then I have a behind the scenes showing you guys exactly how that shot was lit in this next location I'll be honest with you guys I was struggling a little bit with how to kind of utilize the location the downtown area that we were working with. So I did my best to kind of find neutral tones and work with those tones. And like I said before, I did want to have the subject Madison posing onto something to kind of ground her into the location. So that's why I utilized this light pole. This photo, of course, is with the light not on at all, but then I turn on the light, which is going to be this first shot here with the flash firing. Since the sun is now in the shot a lot, there is a bit of flaring going on on here on the bottom part of the bag, just below the bag and a little bit on the top of her head. So these images aren't the best. But I wanted to be transparent with you guys and show you guys these images because these aren't ones that I released and edited because I felt like they weren't good enough. So you guys can consider these kind of like my fail images. So I'll just go ahead and just show you guys the rest of these images. With this new composition, when I turned more to the side, the sun is now less in the way. It's in the corner of the shot now. And I have more of that blue sky behind her. And now I have a good, a better exposure to work with in case I did like this shot. And actually now that I'm looking at this shot, I do like this photo here. And let's see this next one. This one, I feel like her hair is a little bit too windy and I feel like her eyes are a little bit too sleepy looking. And then this next one, I do like the new pose that she gave, which is kind of just holding onto that jacket. I think I might've instructed her to do that. And I do like this shot, so I might edit it and post it, but let's just go ahead and go to the next shot here, which is a wider shot with the same kind of pose 
hair kind of was blowing so it's kind of just going up a little bit and then this was the final shot and i felt like again she was going for like a little bit of the low eyelid like this but i felt like it was kind of just kind of almost working but not fully there but at this point that's the rest of the photos that i took at that photo shoot and that's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to go ahead and just show you guys some of the rest of these images from this photo shoot because I, again, I already made a couple of videos on that other final image. But that's pretty much it for this video. I just want to say one last thing to Adorama for sponsoring this video. It seriously does allow me to focus on my channel and make free content for you guys. So definitely check out Adorama. Take care guys and I'll see you in the very next video.